Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to your special session today uh, on the back of the RBA decision, which is due out in a little over well, about 13 minutes time, I guess. I'm delighted to be joined today by the man, the legend. Lachlan, are you there, buddy? <laughs> yeah, hi, Mark. Hi, everyone. Fantastic. Hey, guys, just let me know you can uh, hear and see me okay. Thanks, Sonia. You've already done that. You're just on the ball. Thanks, John. Cheers. G'day, Neil. Uh, lots of highs to you as well, Lucky. Um, Shane, Bill, Rory, John, Jean. Fantastic to see you here. Thanks, Wayne. Good to see you here, buddy. Um, look, awesome to see so many of you guys who put up with me and me banging on for uh, an, an hour or so, not so long ago, um, on the live market updates. For those of you who aren't part of that, I'll make sure you get the link. We do a session every day. so. I'll post the link towards the back end of the session. But we've got big and more important things to deal with now. But of course, before we start, our airline type safety message that you'll hear at the, at the beginning of every webinar. So just to remind you, this is for educational purposes only. And views and opinions expressed are mine, not representative of the markets. And likewise, when Lockie talks, of course, it's, it's his views and opinions, which are uh, pretty awesome. And what this all means in practical terms is, but do your own due diligence on anything that you see or hear. Make sure you follow trading plans. And of course, manage risk on every trading decision that's on entry and exit. So with that important message being covered, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a little bit of a preamble prior to that data being released. Um, I'm going to hand the reins over to Lucky in around about one minute's time. Uh, and then we'll flick back and have a look at things immediately pre-market of the major asset classes we're looking at. And then of course, we'll see what the action is, the fireworks that occur after that data's been released for the next 15 minutes or so after that data point is out there for the markets to digest. So um, obviously with any big data, the number of forces are play, including what's priced in on Redilock is gonna talk about that and the degree to which the actual differs from the expected. And of course, any deviation from what we expect and what's priced in already is likely to result in a recalibration, total recalibration of market thinking, uh, particularly in this case on the ASX. And of course, all of the Aussie dollar crosses. There may be some impact on other assets, but really those are the focus for today. Um, and really market players, including EAs across multiple, multiple timeframes are gonna position and reposition immediately before. We've already seen a pullback, some risk coming off uh, the ASX uh, and a little bit of movement in the Aussie dollar pre-announcement um, and of course we'll get massive volatility continuing once that data point is released. Uh, thanks Johnny. G'day Brett, uh, we'll see if your signal holds up Michael, it's great to see you here anyway. Uh, right, I'm going to, without any further ado, I'm going to pass you over to the man himself uh, who's going to share a few thoughts uh, and what he sees is going on in cash markets, the bond markets, and it's all yours, Lucky. You should be able to pinch it. It should all good. You see the screen, all right, all right, mate. Yeah, perfect. You, you got my screen. Oh, hi, guys. Um, so I'm just going to go over the expectations of what we see. So uh, this is a really great website, the ASX Rate Tracker. It keeps a, an eye on the 38 in the bank futures day to day and gives you the percentage chance of what they're predicting the next rate decision is going to be. So as a close yesterday, 83% um, is what they're saying is priced in for a 50, uh, a hike to 2.35%. To now, I had a quick look at the Bloomberg screenshot uh, just to make sure that was up to date still. And you can see this, uh, the top line here. That, so that it's an American date format, but the 6th of the 9th, which is today, obviously. But they're, they're pricing in a 41 and a half basis points. now. The way they get that 83% basically is 41 and a half is halfway to, is 83% of the way to 50. That's how they work out that percentage. So um, I've found that these guys are very rarely wrong when when they when bond traders are so heavily skewed to one result. Um, it's in my experience very unlikely they get it wrong. So I would say that the chance of a, a 50 is, is it's almost a done deal, a 50 basis point hike. Um, saying that, never say never, then markets can surprise you, but I'd be very surprised if they didn't hit at 50. Now, what's the question is, how's that going to affect uh, currencies, um, equity markets? So 
if we look back at um, last month's decision, this was uh, early August, where they went into with a very similar kind of expectations of that 50 hike. And we got the 50. Uh, surprisingly, the Aussie dollar sank like a stone. There was no, um, you would have expected some little pop, but no, it literally went straight down for the rest of the day. And um, coming into today's with the pricing in so far towards a 50, even uh, if we do get the 50, I'd expect the reaction in the Aussie dollar to be pretty muted. Um, the biggest surprise would be if they only did a 25 and you would see a really big drop then. But even with a 50, it, it wouldn't bank on the Aussie rallying like you saw last month. And part of the reason for that was if we have a look at um, the statement. Now, the, with the actual um, rate decision, because it's fairly priced in one way or the other, sometimes you can get, as I said, a very muted response from it. But what traders will look for is a statement that comes out at exactly the same time. Um, and a bit of the language change. This is last month's, um, and what just these last two paragraphs is what all the traders, all the all the algos, they've got algos that read this, look for any kind of change in language. Um, I think what was suggested was the reason for the Aussie dropping was just this adding this little sentence in here. Basically, they said that um, they're not on a preset path. They're going to take it meeting to meeting. It's going to be data dependent. And that was seen as a, a dovish statement, which is basically why. Um, the Aussie dollar didn't pop at all on that 50 uh, hike last month and dropped off. So today's decision, um, whether we see a, a small pop in the Aussie dollar on the 50 and then it, it kind of filter away, it's, it's going to be hard to say, but um, what I can definitely say is if they do 25, it's going to drop like a stone. If they do 50, uh, it's going to really depend on this statement, whether we get any kind of um, pop in the Aussie or whether it just drifts off again like it did last month. So. Yeah, it's, it's it's always a bit interesting when the markets split uh, on, on what's going to happen. You will see a bit of volatility, and mostly priced in for a 50, but um, there's still a bit of room there, so hopefully we'll see some action anyway. All right, I'll let you take over the screen again, Mike, um, and you can go through your charts. No worries at all. All right, have I uh, sent it back to you? Yeah, I'll just... You have. I'll keep, I'll, I'll keep an eye on the dealing desk too. So as soon as it comes out, I'll uh, do my best to get the, the result here as quick as I can. That's fantastic, mate. That's awesome. So guys, what, what we're going to look at um, in terms of price action in, that'll change, obviously in around about six minutes time when that data comes out, is we're going to look at the ASX, the Aussie US, uh, Aussie Yen, and we might just have a little peek at the GB pound Aussie as well and uh, the reason for that is that GB pound has been particularly strong today on the back of uh, a new prime minister um, finally being uh, put in post um, and that obviously takes away a little bit of uncertainty the market likes that and the FTSE was the only market up yesterday and the Aussie and the GB pound's done well today so uh, it makes sense to have a quick peek at that our chart of the day uh, on the update was the GB pound yen which is still holding up all right after a nice start to the day. Anyway, let's let's get back focused on what we're looking at today. You can see the ASX 200 on the daily chart, uh, looking to hold support at 6865, and this will be a key level to watch if the uh, if there is a more hawkish tone. Obviously, stocks will not be served well by a rate rise, even if the Aussie dollar will. Uh, and so, watch that to the downside. If we look at that on the hourly chart. You can see we started off really well. We then give all that away and we've been in sideways trends since. So we're going to put most of these onto five or one minute charts uh, just to uh, just to see it as it happens. Here's the USD, uh, sorry, the Aussie USD on the hourly chart. We've got two key levels here. We've got one at essentially 68 cents and a one at around about 68.50. They're, technically, those look like the key levels uh, to keep an eye on again. What tends to happen pre-data is markets will move to a lot of the time I've either move to uh, to nice round numbers and of course it's moved dead on to 68 or it'll move to uh, key price levels. Uh, just it's a logical thing for markets to do and so uh, that is what happens. And you can see over the last five minutes just had a little bit of chop, uh, last sort of 30 minutes just had a bit of choppiness into the data. Uh, the yen has been generally weak or mourning against most currencies, but has picked up a little bit in the last couple of hours. And you can see there the Aussie yen. Again, I put a couple of lines on there just to 
show you where the key levels are at. If we get a break of these, we tend to look for the next one. So if it breaks to the upside and through this 95.89, the next port of call would probably be around about this 96 cent level. If it breaks to the downside, a little choppier, uh, but would possibly suggest maybe a move down to around about, uh, let's say, 95.25, somewhere around there. If we get a break to the downside, that would be a logical place for the market just to take a breath and decide whether it's going to go further down or not, if indeed it does so. So we'll keep an eye hey, on Mike, all can of I those. Can I say a couple of things? Yes, of course. Sorry, mate. I've just um, had a look through another thing to keep in mind as well is that all the data that we've had since the last RBA meeting has um, been fairly weak, I guess. The wage price index uh, in the middle of the month was lower than expected. The unemployment was quite mixed. There's been a, there's been a few inflation expectation figures that have been lower than expected. Um, so it all goes in, I think, to this meeting, given the RBA, they're not going to have to be, I mean, this is personal opinion, um, but they're not going to have to go in all guns blazing, I would think, after some of those figures. Saying that GDP is out tomorrow, and, and they've probably got a read on that we don't know about. Um, mm -hmm. But the figures up till now have given them a bit of breathing space, I think, to not be as hawkish as they may have been a month ago. Yeah, that's a good call. And, and obviously, the PMI data keeps on coming in a little weaker than expected. It did again yesterday from memory, uh, which again yes. might give, which will give some. Um, that that general concern of, of or that balance that all central banks are playing between trying to control inflation without killing the economy completely is obviously front and center of of, of market as well as central bank thinking um so yeah great great uh, great point rocky thanks mate okay we're about a minute away now we should see some action in one minute's time and and as lucky said he'll keep an eye on the actual number we'll have a look at the market response We'll probably start with the uh, probably start with the Aussie US. Uh, you can see there that it's just uh, just pointing to the upside over the last few minutes. Uh, um, I'm just going to take this out a little bit, uh, but that's a level to watch. 68 on the downside, and we could see it up uh, 30 or 40 pips if it comes in a little hawkish fairly quickly. Any pre-announcement trade ideas? Uh, not at this stage. I would be uh, waiting to see the market response, Tim, from a personal point of view. Uh, okay, we've got some movement now. It's just it's volatile. It looks very. This is often the case. There we go. So we've got that. Uh, we've got that initial uh, just before it came out. We've got an initial blip. Uh, we can see there. It's not actually doing a great deal right at this stage on yeah, the, 50 on the US. Right, right. It, so it's 50 came in, so as, as expected yeah came in as it's staying as well yeah for sure um looking at the asx 200 very little movement on that you can see really um looks as though we might saw see a move to the downside in the short term looking at the aussie yen initial pop-up just because it's a headline uh, and then we get sort of uh, any recalibration we've done and there you see some selling coming into the Aussie albeit on a temporary basis at this stage let's just check the other crosses there's the Aussie US selling off and we'll look at the GB pound Aussie and we'd expect this to move up of course with the Aussie uh, being the second currency in the pair uh, watch that 170.21 on the GB pound Aussie we're watching to see if it's gonna breach this 95.60 with any conviction, it's not at this stage. Uh, likewise with the USD, we're now looking for a potential pivot low, uh, or break of that pivot low at around about 67.90-ish uh, as we tackle 68, but those, this is not a massive movement whichever way you slice it. So it looks as though it was probably well and truly priced in. Almost a doji candle now on the ASX five minute chart. Uh, so what we do Wait, here is statement we... really quick. Yep. The the statement's almost identical to last month. So that's that's probably why we've not seen much. It's yeah. no surprises. Almost word for word. So Right, that's really useful. Thanks, mate. Uh, so what we what we normally do here from a technical point of view is we'll start with the minute. As the five minutes comes up, we'd then sort of have a look at 
where this all sits on a one and a five minute chart. And of course, because each of those time frames, you get more and more EAs kicking in depending on how they're programmed. Uh, at this stage, it looks as though there's very little uh, for the market to get excited about either way, as it was dead on upside. Uh, so are we thinking of post drift to the upside for the Aussie? Um, poor. I'm not sure there will. I'm not sure there will be. Um, I think it will be because what will happen is if the market's priced all of this in, then it'll be looking. Uh, it, it'll be re, um, it'll be reverting to the pre-announcement uh, position, which was uh, the Aussie dollar. If we look at the daily chart, uh, has been reasonably strong against the uh, U.S. Uh, in terms of holding on to this support. Um, and with the yen, you can see it's moving right back up again. Uh, you can see, uh, you can see lots of lines. Uh, the key level on this really is uh, is around about this sort of uh, 96 level ish. Uh, so that will revert. And we've had a strong day uh, on the Aussie generally across the board. So it will revert to that once this initial knee jerk is done. Looks as though there could be a drift up on the Aussie yen. Uh, let's just check in on the GB pound. Uh, Aussie, and that's essentially once again given away all of that initial gain uh, that we had. Not much to be had, even if it breaks this level. You're only talking a, a, a matter of pips. Tim, you're so welcome, buddy. Uh, thanks for your participation, your questions. It's always, always really welcome. You guys are just fantastic. You rock on here, you, you express opinions, you ask questions, uh, and that's always makes it a lot easier from our point of view to uh, uh, to keep giving you uh, what you need because questions and what uh, um, or the information you need is what we want to give not the information we think you need so a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a disappointing uh, move on this let's see if there's any moving copper at all absolutely none whatsoever um, so that's pretty started that actually looks quite triangular on the short term chart but that fits with the or with the longer time frames as well stuck under 350 so uh yeah which is which is good no damage of any sort on uh, on the stocks uh let's just see where the asx is sitting right this second on the live just yeah just over neutral it, it did open around about half a percent of the upside but it's just drifted down uh just look at lithium stocks and coal they're both rocking and rolling um we'll actually maybe just quickly do that while we wait and see if there's any late action so uh, we we're looking at New Hope uh, this morning, and uh, that's just continued to move up. And of course, uh, WHC Whitehaven Coal is also looking pretty hot to trot today, uh, as it has done really all week. Um, since it broke through this level here, I know many of you, or some of you, are trading on the back of that, so that's looking good. And then in the lithium space, PLS has been an outperformer. We were also looking at. Uh, so PLS, we went to see if this will make it through to $4. Uh, dollars. This was a chart of the day when it broke here at uh, 3.29. It's done very well uh, since then. And um, oh, and AKE is break, breaching that $14. Just watch this. This is an interesting price move on this. So there's $14 key level on that, which it tested here back in May and nearly, uh, nearly earlier in the year as well. And uh, so... Let's pop back to, so in terms of stocks, there's not been a massive uh, massive move. They're all still looking pretty good, uh, the ones that were trading well before. We're seeing a drift, Aussie dollar just drift up there a little bit. We're now into sort of six minutes after the data. Uh, and you can see it's moved quite nicely on the five minute chart. Just a little more detail on the one minute. Uh, so it might move up a little bit just to recover some of the pre, um, uh, just some of the, remember I said that it had just dropped off a, a little bit prior to the announcement. Uh, if we look at the five minute chart, you just see it drifting down from us the session. So we might see it recover uh, to some degree as the rest of the afternoon progresses. Mike, is um, uh, the position the RBA is in, they're, they're, they're not backed into the corner like you might see the Fed and the and the Europeans who have to start talking really tough there it was a very wishy-washy kind of statement and um, they're, they're obviously being typical RBA don't want to 
surprise the market. They always try to do the conservative thing. So I guess us being in a position where we can get away with that for now anyway, um, you know, bodes well for the economy in general, I guess, that we're not having this crackdown and, and, and you know, foot flat to the floor with, with rate hikes like you're seeing in the US and, and what Europe's going to be going through soon too, by the looks of it. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and just, I think that partly answered your question, Tim. Um, but I think we'll get clues before the next RBA announcement. I think, uh, as uh, uh, as we referenced, um, uh, as we referenced before, uh, the they've stated quite categorically that there will be uh, it will be data dependent to some degree. So look for the next inflation expectations, the next wage index. Uh, and the next jobs data, uh, as well as the GDP, uh, those will all play into their thinking going forward. And as I said, the plan of balance at the minute, without trying to um, accelerate the, the the growth slowdown, um, whilst uh, whilst trying to tackle inflation. ASX on gold markets today, and yesterday is about 40 points higher on the cash price. Uh, that uh, bill is is what you're seeing on the I, ASX. I can just contract. Is it? I can explain that, mate. Um, Go for it, it. It, I think he's referring to our cash price is about 30 points off um, the XJO and also other brokers. The reason is that BHP um, changed the date of their dividend. So we are still pricing in that dividend that will get taken out on the 8th, which is what, uh, Thursday. So after Thursday, there, there'll be a big dividend, um, which will bring it back down in line with everyone else. So it was, for some reason our LP missed that the BHP had changed their dividend date. That's that's why it's out of whack at the moment. Thank you, mate. I hope that answers your question, Bill. Uh, um, let's just have a quick recheck. Yeah, look, we've got we're getting just some just some gentle buy-in into the Aussie at this stage. That's uh, uh what's that? That's about a 14, 15 pip moves since the since the announcement uh, versus the USD. Uh, if we look at the Aussie yen, would expect this to be drifting up as well. Uh, it's just technically it's just testing that uh, 9571 on the very short time frame, uh, and you can see the you can see the significance of this level if we flick it to a 30 minute um, chart, not less so on the hourly chart. Uh, but this looks like an interesting level. Could see uh could see a sort of move up around about 20 pips if it continues this momentum. Okay, any other questions or comments or anything that you want to uh, you want clarity on? And there's the GB pound Aussie moving back up again. As I said, I wouldn't be surprised to see GB pound strength kicking across the board. Uh, a little bit of a little bit of a trend, a little bit of a retracement could be a trend continuation on this uh, on this pair. Just keep an eye on maybe 162.85. Uh, well, that would suggest it's continuing upwards. Uh, just while we're sort of um, just keep an eye on the US dollar just for a second. I'm just gonna. Oops. I'm just going to. Uh, Pop a link in to tomorrow's live update. These run every lunchtime ish, or lunchtime if you're in Melbourne or Sydney. Um, and so you just need to register once and you'll, it's a rolling registration. So 12 30 p.m. Eastern time every day, we will um, be here to uh, just fill you in on what's happening in the markets. Um, Lockie, do you want to put the link in of uh, the news? Uh, the news page as well, perhaps that would be great if you've got a chance. Uh, sure, mate. I'm just how do I uh, do that here? Okay, um, sent to sent to all, yeah, yeah, just pop it in chat and where it says type message and just send to all. That's perfect. Oh, I'll just grab the link. This is a uh, good page to have a look at every day. We have some articles every day, videos, uh, the dividends for upcoming dividends for indices as well. Um, our Twitter feed, etc. So, great place to start your trading day. Yep. Right here is the link. And look, guys, we, you guys are our regular, uh, our regular uh, people who rock up and and have some awesome suggestions. So, just to talk you through this, uh, we've got some uh, what 
uh, some of the majors and minors are doing at the top, um, some featured articles and news going on. Uh, there is a, um, a very short version of the update that I do, and usually the charts of the day I do for Go on YouTube all go in here as well. Some stuff from uh, from Adam, and then we've got some articles there for you to read. If there's anything else that, have a look at it, um, click on the link, and if there's anything you want us to add to that, uh, any feedback you've got, that would be sensational. It's in question chat, okay. Right, so it's in the chat. Uh, it's in the chat area as well. Now that's that's cool. Okay, right. One last check then, perhaps. Um, yep, yeah, all pretty flat. Tack really not going very far, very fast. Index looks as though it's just about holding on to neutral. Nothing much going on with any of uh, any of the uh, pairs at the moment. It's uh, it's about as flat as it gets. <laughs> yep. All right, guys. Well, look, um, that's it for now. Take care of yourselves. Um, just watch out for. There's not a great deal of data coming out today. There's, I think, there's factory orders coming out of out of Germany later. The Savo might impact on the euro a little bit, uh, and some PMI data coming out of the US because it was Labor Day yesterday, so they didn't get it released at the same time as the rest of the planet. Um, so nothing major, but of course we're in still relatively, um, relatively medium to high risk markets. I would suggest for right now. Uh, we will be running other sessions like this as well as our live updates, just the specials. Thanks, Lockie, again for rocking up and sharing. Um, no your worries, mate. Thanks, everyone. Um, you, you guys trade safe. Uh, we'll see you again very soon. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye for now. See you, guys. Bye.